In Descartes' meditations on first philosophy, he tries to establish a foundation of knowledge, an unshakable bedrock that cannot be doubted and on which other claims can firmly be based. To do this, he must first discover if there is anything that is indeed undoubtable. So he doubts everything that he can, by introducing his evil demon thought experiment. He invites us to imagine that a malevolent supernatural spirit has deceived him by placing all of his ideas, memories, and sensory input about the world and his self into his mind without any correspondence to reality. Descartes concludes that even if this was the case, he could not doubt that he, whatever he is, is thinking. He thus concludes that he must, in some sense, exist. He uses this undoubtable fact as the foundation on which to base the rest of his philosophical arguments. A similar thought experiment had been explored over 600 years earlier by first-century Islamic philosopher Ibn Sina, who put forth the floating man thought experiment. Imagine a man forming all at once, fully developed, suspended in air, with no sense perceptions and no sense of even his own body. This floating man also has no memories. The question is, with no sense of the world or of his body, would this man be aware of himself? Ibn Sina concludes that if one is conscious then one is always conscious of oneself and his existence. Ibn Sina goes on to argue that is because the man has an essential soul that is separate from sensation and body, similar to the mind-body duality explored by Descartes. The floating man thought experiment raises the question, what is consciousness? We usually believe that to be conscious is to be conscious of something. But with no objects of consciousness, not even one's own limbs or internal organs, and not even one's memories, what would the floating man be conscious of? Would this floating man be self-aware, or does self-awareness require consciousness of other things to distinguish oneself from? Is there a self without other selves? And if the floating man is aware of himself, what kind of awareness would it be? Are the self, and the consciousness that is aware of the self, separate from each other? Late 19th century phenomenologist Edmund Husserl claimed that the self is defined as being that which is different from other entities. That is, there is no self or ego without context. One could argue that the floating man has an internal context via innate instincts and drives, and some vague ego arises in relation to these. Ibn Sina argued that we have a soul separate from the body and this is what constitutes the ego consciousness and Descartes had to conjure the existence of a benevolent creator God to get out of this dilemma. But it is certainly interesting to consider if real consciousness requires self-consciousness, and what kind of self would this self-consciousness be aware of if completely stripped of any context or any innate conditioning. Descartes' hypothetical doubting of his senses, memories, and even his self was anticipated well before his evil demon or Ibn Sina's floating man thought experiments. Early 3rd century BC Chinese thinker Zhuangzi once discussed dreaming that he was a butterfly and unaware of his true self as a human. When he awoke, he could not discern whether or not he had been a human dreaming of being a butterfly, or if he was really a butterfly now dreaming that he is a human. Zhuangzi's anecdote reveals that our ideas of reality exist as interpretations in the mind, and since we can never escape our own minds, we can never confirm whether or not these impressions are real, a concept that would be discussed thoroughly by 1st century BC Hellenistic skeptic Enesi Demas. Later versions of Descartes' evil demon experiment include Gilbert Harmon's brain in that scenario. In this scenario, a human brain exists and is kept alive inside a vat to which a scientist or some other person constantly gives the brain artificial impulses that replicate exactly the signals an embodied brain would receive from sense data and other input. This disembodied brain, receiving the exact same input that an embodied brain would receive, would have the exact same experience that an embodied brain would have. This is pretty much the same scenario as the evil demon thought experiment except that the scientist and the impulses replace the work of the demon. Even more recently, the basic premise of the 1999 science fiction film The Matrix, in which human beings live their entire lives in liquid-filled pods in which a simulated reality is fed into their brains and central nervous systems, is another version of Descartes' evil demon scenario. Everything these individuals experience and know exists only in the mind, which, as suggested by the other scenarios discussed, is the possibility all of us are stuck with. 
Other contemporary variations on the thought experiment include the simulation hypothesis, a theory that uses probability to conclude that we are likely living in a simulation, or the idea of mind uploading, the speculation that someday we will be able to scan a brain and then use that scan to emulate a mind digitally in a computer. Also, consider a distant relative of Descartes' evil demon experiment, Bertrand Russell's five-minute hypothesis which argues that if everything in the universe came into being five minutes ago, with all of our memories and fossil remains and all of the other signs of a past history, there would be no way that we could tell the difference between this five-minute-old universe from one that has existed for billions of years. Or we can travel back to the ancient Hindu Vedic concept of Maya, that concludes the world of change, perception and self is just an illusion in our minds. Interestingly, the word Maya in Hindu can also refer to Mayasura, who is, wait for it, a demon, the king of a race of demons called the Dhanava.